Hey everybody, welcome back to another game. Okay, let's play the Karo Khan, C65. I was recording a previous game and the power went out on like move 10. <laughs> Felt bad. I was actually doing okay in the previous game. Power, uh, power's been going up pretty frequently. The windstorms are starting to pick up. It's fall time, what can you do? But, yeah, let's hope the power doesn't go out again. I got the generator out, started running it, and then the power came back in an hour. So it was kind of a giant waste of time. <laughs> but that's okay. I played a game, um, where I try, uh, the opponent took on d5 here. I went for this queen a5 check, trying to recapture the pawn situation instead of recapturing with c6 on d5. Um, and I don't, I don't like that. I, I'm probably not going to do that again. I think moving this c pawn over to the d file is a bit better. The game turned very awkward very fast. And I was a bit unfamiliar with the move, so I ended up losing on time, which is strange. Yeah, losing on time in a 15-10 game is really weird, but it does happen to me every once in a while. Yeah, one thing I'm trying to do is make better moves, even if it means losing on time. Um, so I'd rather just make better moves, lose on time, rather than getting in the habit of playing bad moves and losing because of bad moves. It's a really long rant I'm going on. So in this situation, um, I think I actually had a very similar game when I played with uh, Curb Chess, fully expecting G5. I played with a curved chess, and um, they really delayed the development of the dark square bishop in the knight. So um, I've been watching some Karo videos, and one idea that I've seen is sort of going for an early e7, g6 with the knight. Um, and then that way, the knight and the dark square bishop can at least get out. Um, instead of pushing like the c5 pawn, for example. So that's something I'm going to experiment with today, is this early g6 idea here. And then dark square bishop e7. Yeah. Yeah, normally in this position, what I would do is push up c5, try to get the dark square bishop out, and then try to get the knight out to e7. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it a little bit slower in this game. That is a very interesting move. That is a very interesting move. I don't know what his plan is. Yeah, I don't know where he's going with this. I'm just going to be frank. Maybe he's trying to prevent... Knight g6. But even then, he's going to be forced to move his dark square bishop back, right? Because if he pushes h5, I just take his bishop. I don't think he's going to let me do that. And this is very good because, yeah, if he pushes g5, I just take the pawn, pin the knight. So I'm not really quite sure what he's going for here. I mean, here I can just pin the knight, but what's the point? Got three defenders on h4 here. I can't really, um, actually, I mean, I have three attackers. Maybe I could, let me think about this. One, two, three. So if I went one, no, I'd have to have four. I don't think I can go for that. So like here, I wonder if I should go E2, excuse me, E7 castle or like C5 or Knight D7. Those are my ideas. I think I'm just going to go for E7 and get the early castle going. I'm not going to be surprised if he pushes the 
on up though for some reason. Yeah, I, I won't be surprised. I may just have to fall back to F8 if he ends up doing that. It's a little bit awkward because it's going to delay my castling by like two moves. I mean, where can his knight really go? Hmm. Yeah, I do need to be careful here, though. Hmm. This is like a castle queenside game. Hmm. Kind of tempted to just get rid of this knight. I know this looks really strange, but I kind of want to get rid of this knight. I feel like it's going to be annoying if he gets onto g5. Why? Because if I recapture, he gets my rook. Or does he? Not really, because h8 is protected by the knight at the moment. Hmm. That's kind of why I don't want to castle here, actually. Maybe it's time to start pushing c5. There's this weak pawn here. Hmm. I'm just going to play safe and go d7. I'm expecting to see some weirdness going on. Oops. On these squares. I think there's going to be some weirdness. I think he's going to jump a knight or something. Goes that way. Okay. I kind of want to start pushing c5. And do I just castle? How does he really protect c5? I mean, he has his queen, he has a knight. Do I go pin this? I don't think there's any point, right? Hmm. Kind of want to bring the rook out to c8. I'm just going to play it safe and castle. Let's move 10. Might as well. A very awkward structure here with the minor pieces. Interesting. Either rook c8 or on c5. See, I'm thinking about getting rid of this knight because he only has two defenders on this pawn if the knight is gone. Um, and then we could trade off this way. I don't want to go for that. And that'll remove some of these pieces over here from this from my king side. Or do I want to push c5? There's basically two ideas here. Either go after his pieces. Hmm. Or stir up some drama on the queen side. Not really sure. I don't want to just get rid of this knight. I'm going to listen to my gut on this one. Just try to go for this knight. This knight is a bit landlocked. He really only has h2, but I'm happy to trade off for the light square bishop. And then I think I can win this pawn on h4. And he'll be forced to trade off. Yeah, it's actually going to be winning this pawn. Because if his knights go back to h2, he's going to be blocking h4 from his rook. And then the only defender really is the bishop here, which I can easily win. There's uh, three attackers on h4 here. And he's not really threatening anything. 
on the queen side of the board at the moment. So, yeah, I don't know what was going on with uh, pawn h4. It's a very interesting move. What would I rather do? Hmm. H8? That's definitely A square. I'd almost rather just give him this knight and open up the F file. I don't know. I don't know what the play here is. I'm okay with the open F file. I'm getting flashback to the games with the uh, curb chess here. I mean, he'll be forced to take, and then I just go back. And then somehow we're going to have to awkwardly maneuver this knight out of here. I think I'm just going to go for it. If he wants to take it, so be it. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Let me think about this. Hmm. I'm actually going to just try something weird. I'm going to try to get back to F. <laughs> he wants to take. I'm winning here on this square. I'm going to try to attack his light square bishop. He'll either be forced to run back or go to G4 and we can trade off here. Um, Or he just protects the light square bishop. Best case scenario. I think he protects the light square bishop. I think that's his best bet. The h-pawn push is a very unique strategy. I'll just say that. Yeah, so um, random thought. I don't watch my videos back too often. I sort of just record talk whatever's on my brain, and then hit upload <laughs> and make the thumbnail. But uh, recently I've watched back a couple of my videos, and I think I have some kind of um, weird early dyslexia, or dyslexia, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I noticed that as I, I watch myself back and listen to myself talk, I call things the wrong name all the time. Like, I call the bishops rooks, and I call the king the queen. And I just mince my words a lot. So I think I have some kind of weird dyslexia. <laughs> so if you hear me calling something, like if I call this a bishop or if I call this a knight, bear with me. <laughs> I'm perfectly okay with this. This comes with check and he's forced to take. Wouldn't this be funny to trade off? Oh, I think he's just trying to attack the knight, but I don't know. This comes with check, and he can only <laughs> take back with the pawn. Unless there's something I'm missing. Unless he just wants to go on an all-in. No need to think too hard about that move. Only bummer about this move is that I don't have the knight on h5 and now he has all this uh, g file rook stuff kind of tempted to trade these off no that's going to open up the h file um, I think we have to start going this direction yeah I'm just going to go c5 here You know, it'd be a funny move. Sack the bishop, take, queen h4, queen h1, check, boom, scopes the rook, queen b2, queen b6, queen d8, right back home. 
I think that would be pretty funny. <laughs> Something tells me he wouldn't fall for it. Uh, I don't know why. I really hope the power doesn't go out this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he kind of prevented that idea. <laughs> you read my brain. Okay, what's his weak pieces? He has this really weak pawn here. If the bishop wasn't protected by the queen, I would try to like offer it off. Um, I'm kind of tempted to take space here. I'm, I'm really tempted to just take some space on c4 instead of capturing since he's gone queen side. Hmm. And then just start launching everything this way. Kind of the idea. I think he's going to try to just go after this G file, so I want to just throw as much at him at this point as possible. But yeah, do we take D4? I don't really know. Hmm. I think I'm just going to take space and just try to go for a pawn march. Okay, I want to push b5, but the knight just gets that for free. Hmm. Tempted to go something like a4 with the queen. Also very tempted to just sack the bishop and weaken his, his pawn structure here and his castle. Also, like, pawn f6 is an idea at this point. He only has one pawn defending f6. But I think I just have to hurl everything at his queen side. Yeah, probably b5 next. I played a6 to support b5, and then I kind of just want to, like, just throw all the pawns up, even if it means losing one or two of them. I'm surprised he hasn't tried to pin this pawn here. I think he would actually do okay if he just starts putting everything on the g-file here. I think that's like his best path to victory here. He's got three defenders there. Can we push a5 or something? Yeah, I kind of figured this was coming. I'm not going to be shocked if he, uh... yeah, actually, this pawn is going to get pinned here. So I kind of, do I want to offer this trade here? I think I'm going to do worse if I have this pawn barreling down. Mm. I can't play g5 because of a uh, Le Croissant. Yeah, here we go. The G file. The dreaded G file. 
Why is it always the G file for me? Hmm. I'm really tempted to just sack. Get the queen out here. Just get rid of this h5 pawn. Seems to cause me a lot of grief. I know that's cr really weird, but... I think I should have taken d4. Let me think about this. I'm losing three here. Three, but I'm gaining... I would get six in return. I know it's a bit strange. Man. Bishop h4 is really tempting. Very tempting. He has the queen here protecting g5. Man, what do I do? I don't know why bishop h4 is just like talking to me. I don't know why I want to play bishop h4 so much. It's just, it's such a bad move. And I, I just, I know it is. I know it's a bad move, but I want to play it. Hmm. I wonder if I must just push g6 here at this point. Just get rid of this pawn situation, but then I lose h6. I just trade off. I think f6 is the idea, honestly. I think f6 is the idea. Man. If I lose another game to pawn f6, it's going to be really embarrassing. I <laughs> uh, wonder if I just go h7 here. So if he takes, I just recapture back. Maybe h7. But then he has a check. Oh, no, he can't check. Screw it. <laughs> I know I just spent almost four minutes on that, but I felt like in that position, it was a make-or-break move. I think I need to get into the habit of if I have an open G file pointing towards sort of an open G file that my king is on like G8 or whatever, or G2, or uh, excuse me, uh, G1. Um, I think what I need to do instead is just castle queen side and then not worry about the open file threat so much because I tend to do really poorly when I have um these threats here against the king and all my pieces are off over here on the other side of the board um it's just kind of like a common pattern that i've noticed so this at least removes the pin so he can't just freely take this pawn um but it is going to make this position more difficult for me Yeah, but I don't know. Bishop h4 is just calling my name. I mean, he just gave me a rook, which is really good. I think he's going to try to do something else with the rooks over here. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. He gave me a rook. It's a bit strange, but I think it's a trap. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a trap. I'm pretty sure he's just going to play g1.
I think he's going to take the pawn. He's, I think he's going to play the pawn check and then take my rook. I really want to play f6. Yeah, I saw that coming. <laughs> Fortunately, he can't check that way. No. Is this just mate after he goes g1 or something? Maybe I almost have to play h uh, h8 here. Mm. This is worrisome. Yeah, I think I'm just getting mated here. Because I think he has a g8 mate, and then he brings uh, the queen into h6. Yeah, I think I have to get on a light square here, just so his queen can't get over. He has this check here, which I think is good. It kind of blocks his queen in. I think I have to go h7. Castling kingside in the Karo Khan with an open G file from white. I think the play is just, yeah, castle queenside. I'll have to think about that. I'm really curious to see if castling kingside was a mistake in this game. Hmm. Yeah. He gets this pawn. <laughs> uh, oh no, he can't get this pawn because I just recapture. Well, that was the only move I had there. I think I have to trade off rooks. I'm still up three. That's weird. Fortunately for me, he can't get his queen out to g5. I think he should have been focused on pushing his pawn up down the h file. If you're wondering why I'm staring out the window, I'm just questioning everything that I know about chess. I think it was like three days ago I was talking about how sometimes I feel like I'm getting worse at the game. <laughs> this is one of those reasons why. It's going to take a miracle to win this one back. This bishop is a real big thorn in his side. Yeah, I want to go for just the rook trade and get my queen out. The queen is just so bad here. I'm going to offer the rook trade. I do need to be slightly concerned, though. Well, no, if he blocks in with his queen, I think we're okay. But yeah, I just want to get the queen out here. Oh. Oh, and this is protected? Oh, frick. Oh, now I can't really offer that trade. That's really annoying. <sighs> Man, that is really frustrating. This is a really frustrating game. I'm not going to lie. What can I do here? Man, I had such a big advantage here when he played this. Taking the bishop was the idea. Well, I basically had to do this to stay in the game. It's crazy. Let's take it from the top. Well, GG Rajan 6161 from India. Well played.
You played well, you played well. You outwitted me. <laughs> open G file, man. I lose every single game to an open G file. It's really frustrating. Bringing the knight out here was okay. Getting the queen out to b6 earlier. Yeah, I'm just wondering something. Well, black has the advantage here. Holy moly. Um, okay, let's uh, just say we do this, for example. What does it say about queen side? He has a slight advantage here, but it's still an inaccuracy. But I guess at this point, I didn't know I was going to have an open G file. Man, what a move. Kind of safe square for my knight. Who would have thought this was a bad idea, right? I think game fell apart in this, this move here. Yeah, see, concepts like this are very strange to me. Because on one hand, like, th 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 this is this is where chess is very confusing to me. And my amateur brain is just talking here. Like, this feels like a good move, right? Because the knight is less valuable than the bishop. So I think everyone's, like, can agree with that. So that's cool. And then stacked pawns are also bad. So this is where sometimes I get really confused in this game because the common wisdom kind of goes out the window and it's very situational based, uh, situation based. Uh, I think that's why I'm confused with a lot of the chess concepts sometimes. Yeah, because like this position looks bad. Like he can't castle this way his pawns are stacked so you would think it would be easy to take advantage of but it's almost better for him here i mean it's a, i know it's very easy uh excuse me very even but um yeah i don't know just a, a little bit of a rant but uh i'm i'm really curious what hap what would have happened if he had taken here yeah That was an idea. Let's see, f six, f six was the idea. Okay, I think this is what I forgot. This game. So he hasn't castled yet. I've castled. I've developed most of my pieces. Granted, he has too. But there's. I think this idea I've heard is that if the opponent hasn't castled, try to open up the center, which I think why the engine is recommending f six. Right. Yeah, but like even here, I'm in the same predicament that I was in earlier. So let's be real, it wouldn't have played out that way. <laughs> C5. King H7 earlier. King h7 earlier, adding another defender and unpinning the this pawn. Yeah. Right. Hmm. I see. So moving the king to h7, unpinning, and then I can throw a rook on this open file. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really curious what would have happened if I had taken here. This is almost better because it moves the queen off of this really important diagonal. Interesting. And now I could have got my rook out. Started threatening this way a bit more. Okay. C4. So C4 was a mistake because I basically locked myself in. Mm. But it probably would have been better to try to bust this open. Interesting ideas. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. One, one king's move made all the difference here between giving him the full advantage <laughs> and 
not giving it to him. Uh, this protects h6. Even that is so bad. So this protects h6. Yeah. Man, I can't believe that one king move was like such a blunder. It's crazy. This move choice loses a rook. I should have seen this. I should have seen g1. Hmm. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Two king moves cost this game. <laughs> That's so unfortunate, man. Oh, right. This was protected. I should have seen that. I should have seen that. Yeah. I should have seen that. This is definitely my... I would say... I would say this king move was more offensive than this king move. Right? Because I had two defenders. Or two attackers, rather, on g7. And he only had one attacker. Yeah, so I should have just offered this trade. Oh, man, so dumb. So dumb. And then there's no chance his queen would have gotten over here. And then this would have actually, I think, been pretty reasonable to come back from. Okay. Gotcha. And then this was just a huge mistake, and he had mate. I see. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, okay. I played this game really poorly, but there was a lot of lessons here for me. Um, I think the biggest lesson for me here is that if the opponent hasn't castled try to break open the center i think this idea that i went for here with trying to push the pawns up was too slow um yeah i think that idea was just way too slow unfortunately and then i'd say more than anything this last move here was just a really big mistake. I should have recognized the fact that I had two attackers on g7 and he only had one defender. I think that's sort of the bigger crime here. So, okay. Well, yeah, GG Rajon. Thanks for the game. Appreciate it. And see you guys in the next one.